correction of molar relationship the outline correction of molar relationship includes differential growth in adolescent class 2 treatment class 2 correction by distal movement of the upper molars differential anterior posterior tooth movement using extraction spaces molar correction with inter arch elastics and the class 3 camouflage Orthodontic correction of the motor relationship nearly always involves moving from a class 2 or partial class 2 relationship to class 1, although occasionally the treatment will be aimed at class 3 problems. There are two possibilities, differential growth of the jaws guided by extraolar force or a functional appliance or a differential anteroposterior movement of the upper and lower teeth with or without differential closure of extraction space. These approaches are not mutually exclusive, but even when gross modification is successful, it typically provides only a partial correction of a full cusp class 2 or class 3 malocclusion. Some teeth movement al uh, almost always is needed to complete the correction of molar relationship. Differential growth in adolescent class 2 treatment includes extra oral appliances such as head gears and face mask using a functional appliance either fix it or removable and using of space maintainers and space supervision class 2 correction by distal molar of the upper by, by distal movement of the upper molar include different types of distalizers including buccal distalizers palatal distalizers conventional distalizers and implant supported distalizers Intermaxillary elastics or interarch elastics include class 2 elastics and class 3 elastics. Intermaxillary elex elastics extend from the maxilla to the mandible posteriorly. According to a systematic review about the use of intermaxillary elastics, few articles describe the details like size, force, and protocol. It can be stated that the current literature suggested using light forces obtained with 3 over 16 inch diameter light 4 ounce medium 6 ounce and heavy 8 ounce class 2 elastics it is used to correct class 2 malocclusion in finishing stage used 24 hours per day extended from the maxillary canine hooks to the mandibular first or second molar the force of quarter inch 6 ounce the effects flaring of the mandibular anterior teeth lingual tipping of the maxillary anterior teeth mandibular molar extrusion and alteration of the occlusal plane class 2 elastic should not be used until these other factors are under control understanding class 2 elastics effects effects during centric occlusion if this elastics make a 20 degree angle with the upper continuous arch wire and a 100 gram force, the elastic effect has a horizontal component of force with 95 gram, a vertical component of force with 31 gram. When opening with 10 millimeter, with a mouse open 10 millimeter, the elastic force can be increased to 160 grams. The force varies with different angulation of the class 2 elastics. The maxillary arch, the elastic now has 29 angulation with the upper arch. The vertical component of force will be 70 gram and the horizontal component of the stylization will be 144 grams. And in the mandibular arch, the elastic has 35 degree angulation with the lower arch wire. Forward component of force will be 136 grams. The vertical component of force will be 85 grams. When opening mouth for 25 mm, which can happen when patient is speaking, smiling or yawning, the elastic force can be 
again increase to 190 grams but this force cannot be constant and is going to decrease with time this maximum force occasionally exerted has again different effects in the maxillary arch the vertical component of extrusion will be 108 grams the horizontal distalization force will be 156 grams and as in the mandibular arch the horizontal forward force will be 129 grams while the vertical component of extrusion will be 140 grams From those figures, it is now easy to note that by opening of the mouse from, one, uh, from 10 degree, it from 10 mm to 25 mm, the extrusive mandibular force went from 85 to 140 grams, meaning 60% increase. From this biomechanical explanation, the, the clinician must understand that the use of class 2 intermaxillary elastics has to take into account the facial type in order to avoid a facial pattern aggravation. Class 2 elastic effects with continuous arch wires, effects upon the maxillary arch, backward movement of the upper arch, extrusion and downward movement of the anterior occlusal plane, upper incisors and are more vertical, all teeth are distalized, effects upon the mandibular arch, entire mandibular arch is brought forward, the lower molar can be extruded by cultivating of the lower incisors. Effects upon the occlusal plane, sagittal correction of class 2 relationship, downward tilting of the anterior occlusal plane. Effects upon facial pattern, the, man the mandible is brought forward with a posterior rotation, chain goes forward, the lower facial height is increased according to the amount of elastic force used and wearing time, either during day or night or both. The mandibular second molar will move in a superior direction at the same time the movement produced by the elastic at the center of resistance will tip the molar crown lingually. This position, class 2 elastic may be placed on the maxillary arch anteriorly on sectional arch wire, continuous arch wire with anterior loops, a sliding hook, Kobayashi ligature tie, bracket hook and sliding jig. Class 2 elastics may be placed on the mandibular arch posteriorly from second molar and the first molar on loops or buckle hook of bands. Clinical problems with class 2 elastics, redontal problems such as lower incisor dehiscence, abnormal rotation and fenestration, biomechanical complications such as space opening, abnormal tipping, exaggerated rotation and exaggerated extrusion. Dual bite or Sunday bite. A Sunday bite is when someone with a more pronounced upper jaw class 2 division 1 puts lower jaw forward to make the upper jaw look less pronounced. A Sunday bite or dual bite refers to lack of proper fit when the upper and lower teeth are close together. Technically, this is referred to a centric slide. A small amount of slide is normal. This is purely psychological and is done for aesthetics. Some patients have worn class 2 elastics for so long that they can develop a convenience bite and achieve their class 2 correction. The effects of unilateral class 2 elastics. Now as for class 3 elastics. They are used to correct class 3 malocclusion used in finishing stage for 24 hours per day. It ex they extend from the mandibular canine hook to maxillary first or second molar. The force used will be 4 inch 6 ounce. The effects, flaring of the maxillary anterior teeth, lingual tipping of the mandibular anterior teeth, maxillary molar extrusion and alteration of the occlusal plane. Class 3 elastic should not be used until these other factors are under control. The effects of class 3 elastics Forward mesial effects upon the maxillary arch. Forward mesial tipping and extrusion of the first molar. Maxillary advancement. Labial tipping of the upper incisors. Effects upon the mandibular arch will be lower incisor extrusion, lingual tipping of the lower incisors, lower arch nystalization. 
effects upon occlusal plane, counterclockwise rotation of the occlusal plane, effects upon facial pattern, backward rotation of the mandible, chin goes downward and backward, the lower facial height is increased. Effects of clustery elastics either long or short. That is position. Clustery elastics may be placed on the mandibular arch anteriorly on sectional arch wire, continuous arch wire with anterior loops, a sliding hook, Kobayashi legged shirt tie, and brackets hook. Clustery elastics may be placed on the maxillary arch posteriorly, extending to the second molar or the first molar on loops or buccal hook on bands. Clinical problems with clustery elastics will include periodontal problems such as upper incisor dehiscence, biomechanical problems, lingual tipping, excessive extrusion of the lower incisors when using light arch wires. Remember, during the day, intermaxillary elastics have a vertical component of extrusion that is much more significant than the horizontal component. But during night, intermaxillary elastics have a horizontal component that is much more significant than the vertical. The inefficiency of the intermaxillary elastics is, uh, in delivering the applied load can be due to different circumstances, relaxation, opening the mouth, and aging. 20 to 25 degrees in the force applied for the 24 hours period, whereas most of the relaxation was shown to occur within the first 3 to 5 hours after extension, regardless of size, manufacture, or force level of the elastics. To minimize relaxation, patient may be instructed to change the elastics twice daily.